those of you on the steps, if you don't mind staying until you have to move, we appreciate it. Uh, we understand, but we, we want to have uh, the look. The senior pastor of this church, Dr. T. Grant Malone of the, Saint, of the historic St. John's Baptist Church. Thank you, and to our congresswoman, to our mayor, and we are so glad that all of you have gathered here. I've heard these words, that we are in a battle for the soul of this nation, and words that are provocative and divisive, we will not stand for. We must unify this nation. We must do it through the spirit of love. 1967, Dr. Martin King stood at this very church, talked about the essence of true love. We will not stand for it. We must come together. We must make a united effort to vote early. We have to be overwhelming in our support for our cause. We are thankful to both of our leaders for all that they have done and continue to do to ensure our success. The conversation must begin. H.R. 40, reparations, we must begin to talk about the development of these things so that we understand as a people that we must progress. And that is the American people. We all bleed the same blood. So I'm happy to welcome you here, happy to welcome you here, and thank you for understanding unity is in this community. Pastor, thank you so very much. And, and let me um, thank uh, all of you who have gathered here today. Um, I want to have as a visual uh, the day we spent in Washington yesterday uh, that mayor and to all of those who are here look just like 1963. We were overwhelmed with the size of those who came peaceably uh, to be able to speak to the idea of racial equality and justice for all of us. I think it is important as well to take note uh, of a young man uh, that we want to um, find a way uh, that we don't have young men thinking that the only way that they can live their life uh, is to, in essence, carry a gun against peaceful protesters. We don't want our children to think that this is the only remedy uh, that they have in order to feel equal, or that they look at the pain of other people uh, and begin to try to suggest uh, that our nation uh, is a divided nation. Yesterday, the father of Jacob, the father of Jacob, spoke to me and indicated his pain and reminded us that he thought there were two systems of justice. When a young man walks along police officers uh, and nothing occurs, when people are shouting that he has just killed someone, and then a young man by the name of Jacob going peaceably into his car with three young baby children uh, is pulled by his t-shirt and shot seven times. What we don't want to happen is that peaceful protesters are condemned, as we have heard this week, as looters and socialists uh, and uh, individual liberals that are here to destroy our nation. And so we wanted to come as Houstonians, and I think I'm far enough apart, I'm just gonna do this. We wanted to come as Houstonians to be able to begin seeding this question of healing this nation. Uh, we will start, I will announce a racial dialogue or engagement, I will call it, that we will begin in September discussing, working throughout the community to get different racial groups along the idea of civic participation to talk to each other and to be able to know uh, what our differences are but what our common ground is. I want to thank all of the elected officials. Each one of them have come from food distribution, uh, school giveaways, where we meet constituents from everywhere. And when we meet them, we don't meet them in anguish or anger. But what we do understand is that this pain is a deeply seated pain. And if I leave you with anything as I introduce uh, the other participants, my call today 
my plea today is to be almost like the three amigos. We buried our rabbi just a few a week ago. They were of a different background. And what they did for this community is that they showed that where there is hurt and pain, they, Rabbi Khan, Bishop Fiorenza, and Reverend Dr. Lawson, a black man, a Latinx, uh, and a rabbi, could come together. And so I say to those who are de designed or defined, let me correct that, as the majority community, I say to the white community, I say to Caucasians, we cannot carry this alone. The nation cannot stand alone. We beg of you to engage in this discussion. Let not fear and intimidation send you away. Let not talk of law and order against young people who are in pain be a distraction to us working together. Those young people are alongside of your young people, and they are the future of America. They're the future of Houston and the future of Texas. And so it is something that I hope that we will join in. Racial engagement, which will start in September, and will be the kind of community that is a role model to be a standard bearer against the divisive words that will come from anywhere. And we'll accept the fact that Jacob's pain is as great as anyone else's pain. And that we'll understand the pains of the families of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd and many others. And we'll understand that we must find a way that we work in public safety that understands the matter of saving lives that we're here trying to do. And yes, we acknowledge that black lives matter, but we want people to understand when they sit at the table that they are included at that table as well as anyone else. Uh, it's my pleasure to now introduce uh, Mayor Turner who has brought together people on many issues involving uh, the improvement of this community, but also the pain of this community. Mayor Turner. Thank you, uh, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. And and let me just say, uh, um, yesterday was a remarkable day. I was not able to be in D.C. on yesterday. I'm glad you were. I know Bum B uh, was in uh, D.C. And from all the reports that I received, it was an incredible, moving, moving event, 57 years uh, after the March on Washington. Let me also say that uh, I join with you on this racial engagement, uh, this conversation uh, that we need to have. Um, and it needs to be uh, very upfront. Uh, because we're all involved in it, and there's no place better to have it than right here in the city of Houston. Uh, that's the most diverse city in the United States of America. Let me just say that uh, this is a time, uh, even as we engage in self-reflection, uh, even as we uh, engage in the necessary reforms in the cr criminal justice arena, uh, which even involves uh, the city of Houston and our own the police department, and, and then making sure that, that we the police department in the city of Houston, uh, all of the stakeholders, the community, the uh, community activists are all at the table to try to devise a system that will work for all of us and not just for some of us. And let me just say, uh, I can't think of any community in the city of Houston that is not for law and order. And at the same time, uh, every person is important in our city. Every person should be respected. Every person should be treated the same and no one uh, should feel as though that they are less safe, whether they're dealing with people in the community or they're, they're dealing with law enforcement or police officers. We all need to be treated with respect and with dignity, dignity and that's what we're seeking to achieve in our city. As we in review ourselves, our practices, procedures, policies internally, it is important that we do it in such a way that we can to continue to have a unified city because that's the strength of any community and the respect of everyone within our community. So Congresswoman, thank you so very much. Look forward to working with you and the council members and, and uh, State Representative Gene Wu and, and other elected officials with our faith-based uh, uh, community. Pastor T. Graham Malone, thank you for your leadership and for being out there on the front line. Black lives do matter. 
And the reality is we got a lot of work to do. I don't care who you are, where, where you are. We have a lot of work to do. I look forward to working with you. Thank you, Mayor, very much. Let me um, thank you so very much. And as we uh, move to uh, embrace all levels of government, I wanted these elected officials to be here because they are influencers. I want them to be able to repeat and say over and over again uh, when they hear the words uh, that their uh, actions uh, are to be called anarchists, agitators, rioters, looters, and flag burners. Uh, we have to be able to say, no, we're not, we're patriots. And one patriot that I know is Representative Gene Wu, who has a great history and great service. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Congresswoman. Um, and, you know, for my part of this, I want, let me just tell you a little bit about my community. Um, I've done my best to not only represent my district, but also look after the Asian American community. And one of the things that the Asian American community struggle with, struggles with themselves is something that we call the myth of the model minority. Mm. And that is a stereotype against Asian Americans mm. that says that Asian Americans, you, oh, you guys are the good people. You guys are the good minorities. Mm. 